Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. A new 2024 Ripple PDF has been released, guys. This one courtesy of Cypress Domenicor here on Twitter. With every solution, we're realizing a more sustainable global economy and planet, increasing access to inclusive and scalable financial systems while leveraging sustainable technology and a green digital asset, namely XRP. So after Davos, uh, you know, got the green initiative on the brain, Ripple, uh, I guess, decided to release this publication regarding a sustainable global economy and the planet, increasing access to inclusive and scalable financial systems while leveraging sustainable technology and a green digital asset, namely the one that, uh, you know, we're coming back for accelerating global payments for your IT service and business. So again, this was a, a recent report here put out by Ripple and uh, just kind of here elaborating on the Ripple payments. It enables cross-border and cross-currency payments 24-7, 365. Furthermore, in addition to competitive FX rates, it uses digital assets to bridge fiat currencies. It is supposed to be the lubrication, guys, that is going to get this financial market moving. And in conclusion here, they comment, companies that enhance their payment stack with blockchain-enabled solutions stand to realize not only increased revenue gains access and a competitive edge, but also the opportunity to diversify their payment stack and deepen engagement with customers. Check that out too, a competitive edge with blockchain technology, DLT technology. So wanted to thank Cypress Domenicor there just for posting that. We've also noticed a notable move on the XRP ledger, totaling 443 million XRP valued at over $254 million. This one courtesy of Michael Branch, the transaction detected by crypto transaction detention firm Whale Alert on Tuesday involved an unknown entity sending itself the said coins to a newly established XRP wallet. So a brand new wallet was minted to uh, house these particular coins. Upon further investigation, it was revealed that both the sender and receiver are affiliated with Netherlands-based Bitvavo crypto exchange. Specifically, an XRP wallet associated with Bitvavo executed the significant transaction, sending the tokens to a new XRP address on January the 16th. So knowing that, uh, you know, it was 2BitVavo, we do uh, know a little bit about them in relation to Ripple. Uh, they've gained recognition for their persistent transfer of XRP assets between unlabeled destinations with the last notable transaction of a similar magnitude occurring precisely three months ago. While the motive behind these moves remain unclear, the operation is speculated to be a security enhancing measure for the assets involved. And so BitVavo is uh, just another cryptocurrency exchange uh, based in the Netherlands, competitive listing XRP, of course. So probably just to help fund uh, the BitVavo exchange, nothing huge, although they are uh, obviously uh, looking to have more XRP accessible for their clients. So that's some interesting news. Wanted to thank Michael Branch for posting that. Anthony Welfare also came out posting this paper touting uh, more integration with CBDCs and RippleNet. Great coverage of our CBDC platform, Ripple CBDC, Central Bank Digital Currencies, promise to reinvent how everyday people live their lives, live their everyday lives. Imagine all your typical daily transactions like a cup of coffee being handled in split seconds using official government approved digital assets. Now, I know a lot of you guys are probably not uh, too keen on this type of narrative. It's very WEFE. Um, and I'm not either, to be honest with you. But the double-edged sword about holding XRP, and this is a, you know, this is something I tell people in my real life that when I hold XRP and they don't, uh, you know, if they're, if they're the types of people that are against the WEF, they might not know uh, necessarily everything about central bank digital currencies, but they do know about the WEF. Uh, you know, so I try to explain to them what Ripple is, what XRP does, and that they're WEF partners. And so they're like, well, wh why do you like them so much? It's like, well, it's a double-edged sword. You might disagree with the WEF and uh, those types of initiatives, but when holding a cryptocurrency in the hopes of making profits, it's all about the money, right? So anyway, this is the, uh, this is the table of contents here. We've got uh, you know, just a, a basic report here, just uh, outlining what Ripple is, what the CBDC platform is. What really uh, piqued my attention was this, how CBDCs are Ripple's best chance at mass adoption. And so I talked about this uh, a little bit last week, the idea that stablecoin uh, adoption or rather stablecoin regulation is really what's going to spur XRP and XLM adoption, I think specifically. Uh, and so if you guys didn't catch that video, I will link it up here in the top right hand corner. Uh, but the CBDC platform obviously does have a lot of perks, making it an attractive option for governments looking into central bank digital currency services. The underlying technology, the XRP ledger, is uh, one of the most sustainable blockchains in the crypto market and is estimated to use around 60,000 times less energy than proof of work blockchains like Bitcoin. So this is... I guess the narrative to uh, suggest that, uh, you know, you want to use coins that are more sustainable, uh, that do not use proof of work. Uh, and so, you know, I mean, every coin has got its its pros and cons list, of course. 
What are the possible use cases for a Ripple CBDC? Well, it outlines it there. Which countries are exploring them? Uh, some of the pros and cons here. And why this matters, central bank digital currencies are expected to be one of the biggest sources of blockchain adoption soon. So this is, uh, I think, the, the sticking point here. If blockchain, when blockchain becomes adopted, if this is one of the largest use cases, CBDCs, Guys, think of how that's going to affect XRP and XLM utility specifically. Okay, this again is why they're titling this article Ripple's best chance at mass adoption, at least the first step at mass adoption. So a CBDC, central bank digital currency, uh, you know, is going to go a long way in terms of the adoption for, uh, you know, the cryptocurrencies that are going to help facilitate a lot of these transactions, namely Ripple and XRP. Remember when David Schwartz was talking here in this Zoom chat about XRP, maybe not one currency that rules them all, but how XRP can be utilized in this financial system and why it could be better to have a currency that isn't controlled by anybody? A great ecosystem will put the tools for people to use XRP and use other digital assets like in people's hands. So there has to be a thriving ecosystem. There has to be something for everyone so that, like the reason that every one of us carries a smartphone around is because there's something in a smartphone for everyone like whatever you are whatever you want there's something that you can do with that phone that's useful to you and so that ecosystem has just exploded the other thing is that if there there's not going to be one world stable coin the world is not going to adopt the dollar if anything it's sort of moving into a more fragmented direction so i think there's an opportunity for digital assets like XRP to act as sort of the lubrication between uh, stable coins as sort of the settlement. So if you imagine like a U.S. settlement hub with businesses that pay their bills in U.S. dollars and get paid in U.S. dollars. And so they want sort of a dollar denominated stable coin. <clears throat> and then you might have a hub in China that's using some you know stable coin that's pegged to the yuan. Um, you need an asset that can sort of move between those two worlds that's kind of neutral. And so I think digital assets like XRP can position themselves as sort of those neutral assets. One one pitch that I I think could work is like um, if 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 there's not going to be one world currency and like the United States probably understands that they're not going to get the whole world to use the dollar and I'm sure like China understands they're not going to get the whole world to use their currency. They may it may make more sense to have a currency that nobody can control than to have like a currency controlled by your geopolitical adversaries. And so it could be that everybody could settle on an asset that nobody can control. This is the same pitch Ripple makes to banks. So when we go to a bank, and you might think, well, why wouldn't a big bank want a system built by big banks and controlled by big banks that runs to make everything great for big banks? Well, there's a lot of banks that are not big banks. Like when I say big banks to most people, they think every bank's a big bank. Like there's really a small bank? Well, yeah. Like if you say to someone in the banking business, big bank, they think, you know, JP Morgan Chase, HSBC, Credit Suisse, Joyce Bank. It's, just, it's not a long list, right? You know, if I asked you to keep going with that list, it, you'd stop very, very soon. But there's thousands of banks. Um, and so, the you know, uh, the ecosystem is not as um, the banks are not banks are not all the same. A lot of interesting points in this clip here from uh, David Schwartz from back a few years ago. Uh, you know, most importantly, though, the world reserve currency, that concept uh, that the U.S. dollar is going to be a world reserve currency for the next two, three, four or five decades. That is, I think, dead in the water now. The world is becoming more fragmented. Nobody is going to have, no one nation is going to um, really kind of have uh, any kind of global reserve currency anymore, I don't think, past this point. This is why we need assets like XRP to help facilitate these types of transactions. So wanted to thank uh, XRP Daily there and, uh, of course, Anthony Welfare for that original post. Wanted to bring this up too, guys. Riz.xrp posted this. Now, when it comes to digital asset acceptance, Kathy Wood here from Mark Invest, just kind of going back onto the Bitcoin topic here, did comment on the Ripple SEC case, saying that it did have an effect on uh, how the crypto space is going to look in the coming months and years. Listen to this. Mentioned to Coinbase, and I, oh boy, I'm hoping Coinbase comes out with a big victory. What were your thoughts on the SEC Ripple ruling? Because that seems to set some great precedents with the, the case law that the token itself intrinsically is not a security. Exactly. I think that was a very important victory. And you'll know uh, Bitcoin was up fivefold last year, partly for that reason. Mm. I, I mean, uh, Coinbase, I mean. Okay. Uh, so, yes, I think uh, I think that uh, Coinbase is going to do us a great service through the court system and the court system is going to do us a great system. You know, if you look back in history, we have had an experience like this before. It was when derivatives were launched mm. and the SEC and the CFTC were vying for power over regulatory power over derivatives. It went all the way to the Supreme Court, which this probably will. 
And uh, that forced legislation so that both the SEC and the CFTC have a role in derivatives mm. uh, oversight. Uh, but those roles are clearly delineated and they don't cross over. Mm. I think the same thing is going to happen here. So more along the lines of the regulation here, Kathy Wood saying that uh, the market is becoming more regulated. The Ripple SEC case obviously uh, played a big, important role in that. So we're just waiting for the rest of that regulatory clarity to fall in place. Of course, the Bitcoin ETFs, another good step in the right direction. Uh, I wanted to thank Riz XRP for posting that. Guys, with regards to VeChain, we've also got this from Eisenreich. VeChain paves the way for mass blockchain adoption through a new partnership with Elite Oxford University. The VeChain CEO has announced that they're working on a project with one of the leading universities in the world. Sonny Liu expressed his excitement after having a meeting in the House of Parliament. The CEO thanked the University of Oxford and hinted about a future collaboration in the digital economy of sustainability. Down here in the latest, uh, in this latest update, the project has unveiled its latest strategic partnership, which will unite some of the brightest minds in the world. The University of Oxford, which is located in England, prides itself as a world-class research and education center. And the VeChain project now celebrates a collaboration with the oldest university in the English-speaking world. And guys, here is the tweet just uh, to support that. We're forging the path to blockchain mass adoption in close collaboration with leading global institutions. And this is Sunny Liu over there at Oxford. First time to have a meeting in the House of Parliament. Thanks, University of Oxford, to make it happen. And pretty excited about future collaborations in the digital economy of sustainability. So that is also some interesting news with respect to the VeChain project. Again, VeChain, another cryptocurrency that has been decimated, uh, you know, just uh, recently during this big downturn for the crypto space. But we're getting very, very close, guys, to, I think, some uh, buying opportunities for those of you guys looking to cost average down. Again, this is not financial advice, but for those of you guys interested, you can follow what I'm going to be buying. As this market does bottom, you can find all that at patreon.com slash working money channel. VeChain is one of those cryptocurrencies in my legacy portfolio and part of the $10,000 plus Patreon portfolio that I'm uh, sharing with with my Patreon subscribers. So patreon.com slash working money channel. Mike Manfield here bringing this up to guys with regards to Ripple partner Lulu Exchange. They've just introduced Bharat BillPay, uh, an exclusive from Lulu Exchange for the first time now in the UAE. You can now pay your bills in India via Lulu Exchange branches or the Lulu Money app. So now you can enjoy a smoother and more convenient Indian bill payment experience with us. So they just posted this recently. Many Ripple partners here promoting new business partnerships and new features uh, for their business, new regions, geographical locations, where you can now make payments quicker, easier, more effectively uh, in some of these corridors that used to be very, very difficult to make these seamless payments. So another great piece of news here from Lulu Money. Wanted to thank Mike for posting that. Wrath of Kahneman here also noticed this connection, a mystery. eBerry, okay, they're partnered with uh, Ripple partner Santander. They predicted twice their 4.86 billion FX volume in Brazil uh, for 2024. Who is eBerry with regards to XRP? Well, Ripple partner Santander is a majority owner. At one point, their site said they connect to Ripple and eBerry bought ODL users Bex Bonco. So what does that mean, guys? I think we're definitely seeing a connection here. UK-based fintech company eBerry has started widening its operations in Brazil. By the way, Brazil already does have a connection to Ripple. Uh, I believe it was, was it Brazil or was it Colombia where Brad Garlinghouse did meet with a central banker over there back in uh, 2020? I think it was during the, uh, in the midst of the beer flu. I don't know why I remember it that way. Uh, but anyway, eBerry is widening its operations in Brazil, which is reportedly seeing a potential main revenue market. eBerry plans to expand its operations in Brazil. Uh, that comes as the company officials have reportedly predicted that in 2024, eBerry will double its US USD 4.86 billion foreign exchange exchange volume done in Brazil the previous year. As outlined in previous reports, Brazil is currently eBerry's third largest market by volume for revenue behind the UK and Spain. Uh, despite Brazil's position, company officials have stated that the company's primary emphasis is not specifically on uh, making Brazil its main market. News of eBerry's widening, though, of, of operations in Brazil surfaces as the UK-based fintech company has revealed that it's preparing an initial public offering in 2025. So that could be why, uh, you know, they're ramping up business. Uh, they definitely want it to look good on paper, obviously, if they're looking to IPO in 2025. So a Ripple connection here to eBerry, perhaps uh, opening the market up in Brazil through these new corridors. Wrath of Kahneman also uh, noting down here, uh, news and speculation, eBerry, uh, this was back from May of 2022, by the way, eBerry has acquired Ripple partner Bexis to broaden their international transfer solution for SME and support online. It will be integrated into eBerry, but eBerry was recently controlled by Ripple partner Santander. 
As of April 2020, Santander became a major shareholder in eBerry to enter new markets in Latin America and Asia for $350 million. Uh, if Santander wants to buy Bexis outright, they could have. So likely just an eBerry decision for Latin America and uh, small to medium size enterprise ability. At the very least, Santander has further exposure to Ripple use now. And so uh, that's just another great connection there from the Wrath of Kahneman from back in 2022. Interesting news there. Wanted to thank the Wrath of Kahneman for posting that. So what else came out of Davos, guys? Did you notice this? Bitbond CEO and founder Radoslav Albrecht, he confirmed that Bitbond is utilizing a unified token infrastructure. Now, we've heard a lot of news about XRP and the XRP ledger tokenizing or looking to tokenize assets in the coming years. Well, here's some more news with regards to Stellar XLM. If you guys are uh, Stellar fans, if you guys are XLM fans, remember the WEF. Uh, is very, very bullish on uh, particular cryptocurrencies. This is from their 2021 report, including XRP and Stellar. Anyway, listen to this. Um, the paying agent may not be necessary anymore for certain types of asset classes. And there are compliance functions such as managing a whitelist. Sometimes you may want to have permission tokens under the ERC 1400 standard. In that case, you want to have a whitelist. And of course, you need to be able to add and remove um, organizations and addresses from the whitelist. And so all of these things are additional value that come on top of just representing the ownership of an asset with a token. And all of these things you can do when you have a unified tokenization infrastructure, because then these smart contracts are delivered automatically along with that. So unify, tokenize infrastructure, obviously uh, very, very important for what these guys want to do here, tokenizing specifically uh, for this project on the Stellar blockchain. So some great news there for XLM holders. Oh yeah, and just this two bit bond collaborates with German bank to issue Euro stable coins on Stellar. So this is just uh, some more supporting evidence here from back in December of 2020 uh, with regards to Bitbond and Stellar. I will link all this in the description of the video for you guys. If you're interested to look into this further now, happen to see this as well, guys, in order to fundamentally change the system. First, you must burn the old one to the ground. This is Scott Menard. And listen to what he's describing in this next clip. Now, what likelihood do you see of some sort of damaging attack on the global payment system and the U.S. payment system in particular. Right. Well, I think that uh, I would put the probability at very high. I mean, certainly well over 50 percent. Um, and the reason that I, may, I put it so high is, one, is nobody seems focused on it. And two, uh, it, for someone who's sitting out there thinking that they want to disrupt the, our economy, uh, this is the most logical choke point in the economy. So, you know, I, I got accused when talking about this once that I'm actually alerting terrorists and other governments on how to attack us. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I think that uh, the likelihood is uh, they're already thinking about it. Interrupting the, this flow of capital, uh, you know, would just cascade through the system because people, you know, if they sell a security or they they, they're looking to raise cash for some reason, whether it's a business or an investor. Uh, they've usually doing that because they've committed the cash on the other side. And so you can just see how it can just become a chain. We need a, an international cooperation to, to begin to assess the risk and figure out how, one, in the short run, we can harden the system that exists, and two, in the long run, modernizing it. Uh, you know, uh, delivery versus payment, which is the standard way that we've delivered securities for a hundred years, uh, is sort of in, a, in an age like ours kind of ridiculous. Uh, there's no reason why that just can't be instantaneous. And so, uh, but that's going to take, you know, a, a new generation of technology. And whether that's blockchain or whatever that is, um, you know, it, it's, it's, uh, it needs to be modernized. And, uh, you know, in the short run, um, you know, I think that, that uh, people, especially people like uh, central banks, uh, uh, exchanges, so on and so forth, need to really take a hard look at their systems, not just their system, but in the interconnectivity of the system and how secure is that connection. So a really great clip here from Scott Menard. Notice, U.S. system is vulnerable. We do need a brand new system. There is the technology for it, whether it's blockchain or whatever. 
Also notice the Agenda 2030 little uh, clip here he has on his lapel. He does also have connections to the WEF guys. I wanted to bring you to this uh, to this video that I did about two years ago now. Did Scott Menard just describe XRP when discussing a new winner in crypto? Listen to this. I got to bring you this clip here, guys, from Jeff at ISO underscore XRP here on Twitter, retweeting out Jack the Rippler's tweet with regards to Scott Menard. For those of you guys who do not know who Scott Menard is, he's the chairman of Guggenheim Investments and Global Chief Investment Officer, uh, and he's a managing partner. So as chairman of Guggenheim Investments and Global Chief Investment Officer, Mr. Menard guides the firm's investment strategies and leads its research on global macroeconomics. So he has worked for a multitude of companies, including Credit Suisse uh, and a lot of U.S. banks. I will leave his bio uh, as a link in the description of this video if you guys want to read up on him further. Uh, part of this, though, that I wanted to just make a point about was this down here. Mr. Menard is an advisor to the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, the OECD, on long-term investments, is a contributing member of the World Economic Forum and their Global Agenda Council on the Arctic. So he has ties, guys, with the World Economic Forum not to mention decades of experience working for some of these major financial institutions. Need I remind you, and I feel like I'm bringing this up more often than not these days, Ripple is listed on the World Economic Forum's website. Okay, Ripple is a provider of global real-time settlement and contributes updates to the open source software through GitHub and works to promote the network. Its website helps customers and companies use the network and helps developers build Ripple applications. These guys have been eyeing Ripple since the beginning, and we know the World Economic Forum also has this mandate, uh, this clean green initiative, right? So Accenture, a Ripple partner, green initiative with Microsoft. Uh, we see this guy, Scott Menard, has ties with the World Economic Economic Forum, which brings us to this clip here, guys, from CNBC. Let me play you this. Do you think it's going to be Bitcoin or Ethereum or Bitcoin and Ethereum? How does it ultimately play out? You know, that's a, that's the tough question. Uh, you know, I think uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum will survive. But if you let's go back to the uh, Internet bubble, you know, AOL was the absolute winner. Uh, and nobody questioned that they were the leader. Um, Yahoo was the winner. Um, and so then Google came along and uh, other, P other players came along. And so uh, I think what we're gonna find out is there's going to be some new crypto that comes along, um, which can overcome some of the issues that we're facing right now with the cost of mining, you know, all the carbon production. Yeah, uh, and issues like that, and it'll be a superior form of crypto, and I think that will become the dominant crypto. So talking about the sustainability issues, Bitcoin, Ethereum, not going anywhere, but there will be another cryptocurrency that will in fact change the face of finance. Remember, the WEF has already listed XRP and XLM in this report. And Scott Menard connected to the World Economic Forum. Guys, XRP, perhaps XLM too in some capacity, is going to be that lubrication that moves the money, helps to move stable coins and other digital assets throughout this new financial system. These cryptocurrencies are going to hold value down the road. That's just my opinion, but I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.